and here is where um, you pass in the authorization details. So, hey friends, welcome to the video. I just want to say a massive thank you to a whopping 4,000 subscribers. I'm really chuffed about it, and it's nice to know the content I'm making is helping you in your programming journey. With that said, I'm going to be celebrating on the weekend with a big fat takeaway. I haven't decided what I'm getting yet. Probably not a good idea in lockdown, but you know, go enjoy yourself and celebrate these moments. With that said, let's keep this community growing, so make sure you smash that like button if you're learning programming and want to see more videos like this. Now let's get on to the video. Today we're going to do something slightly different. In this video, I'm going to give you a complete overview of the Spotify API. What I'm going to do is walk you through the Spotify API through the lens of a programmer. You're going to get a better understanding of what the API has to offer. Everything from libraries and interacting with tracks to understanding authorization and how you would go about doing that depending on the app that you're trying to build. And then the bonus at the end is we're going to look through an end-to-end -end example of creating a playlist with the Spotify API in Python. I highly recommend that you watch the entirety of this video because not only will you learn how to navigate the Spotify API, but you're also going to get some pro tips on how to work with other APIs in the future. With that said, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this video, so buckle your seatbelts and let's get started. Right, the first thing you want to do is you want to go to developer.spotify.com. Um, I'll put a link in the description below. And essentially, this is what the homepage looks like. So it's Spotify for developers. And here, as you can tell, you've got a few links. Now, I want to break this video up into three parts. The first part, I think, will uh, browse through the API documentation just to give you a flavor or give you a better understanding of what Spotify offer out of the box, which is quite cool. So essentially, we'll look at uh, the different things that you can do with the Spotify API. So that's the first thing we're going to do. The second thing we're going to do is then look at authorization and rate limiting. Authorization, I think, deserves its own entire section because I get a ton of questions questions um, about like how you go about authorizing with the Spotify API because there's a couple ways to do it and you might want to adopt a specific authorization flow depending on the app you're trying to build and then we'll leave the best to last which is actually interacting with the API so we're going to write a very simple Python script that actually creates a playlist um, using the Spotify API and we're going to keep it simple we're not going to do anything too complicated I've got a project um, actually on my YouTube channel where I automated the process of adding a music Music video from YouTube uh, to Spotify and so if you're looking for something a bit more complicated fun challenging all that jazz um, I'll include a link uh, up above so feel free to click that but again the goal of this video is um, or in the case of the last part we just want to uh, do something simple and I just want to show you how you can uh, do that by creating a playlist with the Spotify API right so let's start with hovering over the docs link and as you can tell you get a nice little menu here and you've got a couple of things, right? So as you can tell here, you've got iOS and Android. So essentially, if you're building a mobile app, you're going to uh, want to be referring to these links here. But if you're building like a web application, you know, a Python or JavaScript file that's going to run locally, um, then you're going to spend uh, most of your time in the web API. Um, by the way, later in the video, what I will do is I'll go over examples of different types of apps that you can build. And in those scenarios, what kind of authorization flow um, you'd adopt. So uh, we'll keep that uh, for later on in the video. But for now, again, uh, we're going to build a simple Python script. So um, what you want to look for is uh, this link called reference. And as you can tell, reference also exists in every sub menu here. So you've got it under the web playback SDK iOS and Android and the reason why is because reference essentially this is like the crux of the Spotify API this is essentially where you're gonna spend most of your time and this is because um, this is uh, the page where Spotify tell you all the different uh, bits of information that you can get from the API and they expose all the different things that you can do with the API and so um, and they get quite specific with that so as you can tell on the left hand side if you've used Spotify before, I imagine if you're watching this video, you have, <laughs> then you can see on the left hand side already, there's, uh, it's already starting to ring a bit of familiarity, right? It's because you've got like playlists and you've got browse and you've got follow and library and all of those things are essentially uh, components of the API that you can sort of interact with. So let's start by clicking onto playlists. So if I click onto playlists, um, again, there's quite a bit going on here, but we'll, we'll go through it. So on the left hand side, firstly, it's quite, um, it's quite nice. It's quite intuitive. You get a clear understanding of exactly the thing that you might want to do so say for example you're building an application that's going to need to get a list of a user's playlist great <laughs> you've got the link right here right so you can click onto that um, equally if you're building an application that needs to get a playlist create a playlist reorder you know here essentially it's quite intuitive uh, in that Spotify give you a clear understanding of the different things that you can do uh, with playlists using the API and uh, the same pattern is followed with the library 
So you can, in this case, uh, your Spotify library. So here you can get a user's or the current user's saved albums. You can remove a, a user's saved tracks. So, you know, essentially each section will have a link that basically tells you uh, something that you can do with the API with respect to that category. So I'm gonna go back to playlists and then I'm gonna go into create a playlist. The way the docs are structured are such that if you click any one of these links, they're all gonna have the same headings, which is really handy because you can get straight to it and it builds that familiarity, which makes it easier for you as you build out your application. With that said, we have the endpoint and annoyingly, actually, they don't put the endpoint here. They put it on the right-hand side, not sure why they've done that, but endpoint is quite straightforward. It's basically the URL that you're gonna, you know, hit, request, call. I use them interchangeably, but essentially this is the API uh, URL that you're gonna hit to, um, uh, create the playlist. Now, as you can probably tell, sometimes in the URL, you might need to substitute a value. And what do I mean by substitute? Well, in this case, um, if there's braces, it means you need to replace the value here. So you need to provide a value uh, for the user ID. And um, actually, uh, they make that easy for you here under the request parameters. So they sort of tell you that uh, you need to provide the user ID and they say, this is the value you need to provide. And um, it's quite good. They link to exactly uh, what the user ID looks like. So if I click onto that, as you can tell you've got the Spotify user ID it tells you uh, what it looks like or it tells you what it is and then it tells you what it looks like and usually that's just your username but lowercase so that's uh, quite handy so if again if you make a request to this URL you just need to uh, provide the user ID you also have header fields and this is where authorization gets quite interesting so I'll cover this in the next section but essentially header fields usually with any API call you make not just with the Spotify API uh, typically this is where you pass authorization details so if you ever think about you know um, an API that you know require in well in Spotify's case requires some sort of authentication um, um, you're going to need to provide some sort of token secret. Um, usually, you pass it in the header fields um, in the authorization field specifically. So uh, we'll get onto that in the next section, but essentially it gives you a bit more detail about that. And really, the last two sections are quite straightforward. The body parameters is probably the most important. This is basically where you provide the data. So um, in this case of us creating a playlist, uh, it tells you that you know you need to give a name. So you need to give a name for that playlist. You need to uh, tell Spotify if it's public or private. Um, if it's collaborative and you can give it a description too, uh, but also on the right hand side It does tell you, you know, if you have to do it um, in some cases you don't have to do it So the name you, is required like you you have to give the name But there's other you know in this case public and collaborative optional So if you don't give it, you know, you can still create the playlist So that's worth knowing just keep an eye on that um, Because not all requests require that you provide, you know, the value for every single one of these um, Parameters and in some cases, you not might you might not need to provide any at all So uh, that's worth bearing in mind and then the last thing is the response format and this essentially describes what you're going to get back so assuming that the hate um, the api request went through successfully usually that's indicated by a 200 or a 201 status code um, it'll tell you you know what kind of data comes back and you've got a few things going on here the first is it'll tell you uh, the object so spotify usually it works in this object notion so you know a uh, a track is an object a playlist is an object a user with spotify is an object right and again they actually link to it so if i click on the playlist object you get a full breakdown of all the different fields in that object so you know in this case a playlist with have um, all these different pieces of data like the name the owner whether it's public the tracks in that playlist so that's quite handy and um, that's a playlist object really and then on the right hand side um, this is quite cool because if you scroll down a bit it actually gives you a sample of what um, a, the playlist object uh, looks like or in other words what it's going to return so that's quite handy um, because you can copy this maybe and uh, you can test it with your application maybe you just want to see if your application handles um, the response that you get back when you're creating a playlist without actually you know implementing uh, the api call itself this acts as good test dummy data so that's it really for just understanding what the api offers again you can take your time to explore each one of these sections because you know sometimes depending on the application you want to build and i'll get onto some examples in the second um you might uh, want to see first of all if, if it's even possible because um sometimes you know i've come across apis not just a spotify api where i've wanted to do something but unfortunately Unfortunately, the API doesn't expose functionality to do it. And so, um, you know, you can't do it unless you work your way around it. There might be a way around it, depending on, again, what you're trying to do. But um, so it's worth just browsing around. Um, if you have an idea for the application you want to build, uh, just check the uh, API reference just to see uh, if they have what you're looking for.
Right, so let's move on to the fun stuff, authorization. Now, I'm telling you, this section is funny how authorization, because authorization isn't just something specific to the Spotify API. Um, it's for other APIs too, and it throws off so many developers. You know, it causes a lot of confusion. A lot of beginner programmers don't know, you know, how to navigate authorization, where to start, how it even works, because there's a lot to understand when it comes to security. Security is just not um, the easiest thing to understand. It's actually quite complex. Um, so the, anyways, let's go to the section. So you can find it if you click uh, Guide and then you click the authorization guide here you get a full guide provided by Spotify as you can tell it's fairly long um, but this details basically how you go about authorizing with the Spotify API so as you can tell the authorization guide is actually quite long now um, you don't need to go through all of this um, my job is actually to highlight the important sections and hopefully give you a better understanding of the things that you want to focus on as you build out your applications. So if you scroll down, you'll come to the scope section. And now this is where I'll probably give you an example of an app you're trying to build and how scopes are relevant to that. So say, for example, you're building a web application where you're going to allow users to log in with their Spotify account. So let's get creative. Maybe you build a web app that um, shows a user some visualizations of uh, the kind of tracks that they listen to. And maybe you categorize it by genre and you get a bit creative um, uh, by artist. And essentially, with that kind of application, it's going to live on a web, uh, web server somewhere. It's going to allow uh, Spotify users to log in and it's going to need essentially the data on Spotify, right? So with that kind of application, scopes become relevant because scopes are a way uh, for a user uh, to have control over what data they give you in your application. So if you've ever used an app that gives you the option of signing in with Facebook, then um, when you sign in with Facebook, usually it asks you, do you want to give your name? Uh, or oh, well, of course, usually uh, for the most part, actually, you have to give your name, I believe. I can't remember, but it'll be your name. It'll be your friends list. It'll be your date of birth. Right. And the user can uh, option you choose or to uh, not give that. Right. They can sort of continue to sign up. But some apps actually require that. Right. Because some apps might need access to your friends list, uh, depending on the application. Essentially, that's scopes in action where Facebook are allowing a uh, user who's signing in to another app with Facebook to be able to restrict the data that they give away or the permissions that they give away to the application. Um, funny enough, the irony with Facebook and them being in the news recently with respect to privacy and WhatsApp. But nevertheless, um, anyway, scopes in this case, especially with Spotify, allow a user to do a similar thing, right? So if your application, again, is going to show visualizations of, you know, of what a user is listening to on Spotify, in that case, you don't need to be able to, you know, create playlists with that Spotify user's account. You only need the scopes to, you know, read uh, their playlists or um, I don't know what the read email one is, but you have a list of scopes and you don't need every scope. Um, so if I click on scopes here, uh, what it will do is it will hopefully it should give a list of scopes somewhere, authorization scopes. Yeah, as you can tell, there's quite a few here. Now, again, depending on the application you're trying to build, you only need some of these scopes and a user, when they sign in with the Spotify to your application, they'll be able to select which ones uh, they approve. So just bear that in mind. Don't ask for everything at the beginning because it's unlikely a user is going to want to continue if you know, you're know you trying to edit their playlists when you're trying to build a simple web app. That's all, all it's meant to do. Again, it's just meant to vis um, have some visualiz uh, visualizations uh, for the tracks that they listen to. Right, so moving on to authorization flows, and this is where it gets quite fun. As you can see, there's, quite, uh, there's a table here, and it lists out four different authorization flows that author or authorization flows that you can use right so um uh, the key thing that you want to look out for is this column here which is access token refresh now very quickly when you authenticate with most apis or most secure apis and spotify of course fits into that category um what happens is you usually get a token and a token is something that lasts you know usually a couple of hours maybe in some cases just one hour or maybe a day but in any case that token doesn't last very long and your web application, um, in this case, is going to have to handle the case where the token expires. And usually you do that with this refresh token mechanism. And so if you're building that web app that we talked about, um, you're going to need to use one of these flows because that's the one that's going to give you the capability to refresh a token when it's expired. And that's essentially important. Otherwise, your users are going to have errors um, when they, you know, they're trying to view the graphs of you know, what tracks they listen to. But they're getting errors saying you know, your token is expired. You don't want them to have that experience. So you're going to need to use one of these authorization flows uh, that have access to the refresh token. Now, if you're writing a Python or JavaScript file, 
that's just going to create your playlist, which we're going to do in a second. In that case, you don't need this complicated authorization flow that you know has access to uh, refresh tokens. You just need um, one of these, which is basically uh, quite easy to implement um, code-wise. You know, there's not much to it. And it doesn't have access to the refresh token. It's totally fine because these tokens, they don't last for long. It only lasts, you know, an hour, a couple of hours. And that's fine because you're not going to be running the script 24-7. Uh, you're not going to be put on a web server somewhere. Um, this is just something maybe, you know, you just want to uh, like a hobby project or something you might share with a friend. With that said, it's quite easy to implement. And it's usually the go-to option if you're just trying to spin up something quickly that interacts with the Spotify API. Now, with that said, Spotify also provide a link for each one of these authorization flows. So if you click onto it, it's on the same page but essentially it's a section uh, that covers the uh, auth set authorization flow in much more detail and so uh, it's quite handy because again if you're building an application that makes use one of of one of these then you're going to need to uh, actually dive into the uh, detail here now the last thing i want to run you through is this notion of rate limit so i'm going to do that by clicking the search button and by the way whenever you work with apis usually um you might want to just search for things um it's just easier and it helps you get to where you want to quicker so um i'll probably click on the first link and then if I search rate limit on this page, yep, yeah, fab. So here we've got rate limiting, right? And rate limiting is essentially a way for APIs to be able to restrict how many requests you make to them. So um, why would you want to do this? Well, of course, Spotify has a bunch of web servers and systems running, right? And whenever you make a request to the uh, to the to one of these uh, uh, or the Spotify API, it's having to um, you know handle that on their end, right? And what might happen, as you can imagine, is if Spotify is dealing with an incredible number of API requests in like, you know, in, in 10 seconds, maybe they're getting hundreds of thousands, that can potentially take the app down, right? So Spotify, need, uh, Spotify API, as well as other APIs, need a way of protecting themselves. In other words, protecting themselves from a humongous amount of traffic in a short space of time that could potentially bring the app down. Now, the way they implement that is with rate limiting, and essentially this is being restrictive on the number of requests that you can make. Now, in this case, Spotify don't actually tell you how many requests you're allowed to make per second, and I think they've purposely left that out because they just want you to leave it up to intuition, but specifically, they want you to be able to handle a case where you're getting rate limited, so they also want you to write good code um, that handles that case, and they give you a bit more details of uh, how you can go about doing that. In this case, it will return a 429 status code saying you've made too too many requests and they tell you to check the retry after header in the response and they see a number displayed which corresponds to the number of seconds that you actually need to you know back off for a bit before you make the next request so they you know they detail out that um or that out quite nicely for you funny story actually back in the day i say back in the day it's still used but ddos attacks were actually one way that you could actually bring a website down so the idea is that you know you get um, a bunch of people together i think uh, what people used to do is um when they used to coordinate ddos attacks which is just basically flooding a server with requests um, what they do is they get you know a thousand people all at the same time to get, um, run a particular script that just sends out requests every second or however many requests every second you get a thousand people to do that that's like hundreds of thousands of requests potentially and uh, that would be enough to take websites down and ddos attacks are actually quite um, or they're still common today of course um, a lot of um, uh, applications like you know spotify or big organizations like spotify and facebook are much more sophisticated and they're much better at handling that traffic but smaller websites are probably not so uh yeah it's just something uh something uh worth knowing about ddos it's uh quite, still quite popular in the uh, ethical hacking world right so let's now walk through an example of creating a playlist so the first thing you want to do is click onto console and the console essentially is very similar to the reference in that on the left hand side you can see uh what you saw before which was playlists you know episodes and if i click onto playlists and i click on to create a playlist you notice here you can actually you've got fields that are editable and this is why um, or this is the reason why uh, the console is actually great. What this allows you to do is it allows you to run a request or make a request to one of these endpoints in this case creating a playlist with parameters that you define. So here you can give the user ID and here you can actually give the request body in this case the name the description and public. So it's pretty cool it's actually really handy um, especially if you don't want to write any code and you just want to test 
what kind of data a particular endpoint will give back uh, once you uh, give the parameters. Now the more important thing is if you come down to this section here you have this OAuth token you can see one's already been generated for me but this is key right because you know that authorization flow uh, which gives you access to a token that's short-lived and it can't be refreshed and it only lasts for a certain period of time I think this one a couple of hours or maybe just an hour in this case you want to click get token and uh, because we want to create a playlist with the Spotify API, we want to use, let's just click both because it's fine. It kind of tells you these are the required scopes for this endpoint anyway. And then if I click request token, it'll give me a fresh token. So in this case, I can copy this and then we'll head over to our script. So I'll open up Sublime. And now what I'll do is I'll copy it into this field or this variable called access token. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through this script that creates a playlist on Spotify. So walking through this script, the first thing is you notice we only import one library and that's the request library. This is the library that we're gonna to use to make a request to the Spotify API. You notice I've got two constants here. One is the playlist URL or creating the playlist URL. And that's the one I copied from the docs. And remember how I mentioned that you need to replace the user ID. In this case, I've put my user ID here. So that was good. And I've also created another constant with um, the access token, which I just pasted in. Now the script is fairly simple. If I actually scroll down to the bottom, um, this is where essentially the application is gonna start. So as soon as I run, I'm gonna call a method called create playlist on Spotify and we'll get onto that in a second. I'm gonna give it a name and call it my private playlist. And notice here, I've set public equal to false so that it's gonna be a private playlist. And then uh, we'll put the result in a variable uh, called playlist and then we'll just print it out. And then if I scroll up above to this create playlist on Spotify function, it again, it's quite simple. Here I'm making a request out to this uh, endpoint um, and that's the Spotify create playlist URL. And here is where um, you pass in the authorization details. So as you can tell, we've got headers and this is how you pass the authorization header. So the key is authorization and then the value is bearer with a space followed by the access token. And I've used an F string in Python to make that all nice um, or to make that look uh, better than otherwise you'd usually have to use format and it just adds extra code. So that essentially is how you pass in the authorization and you pass in the access token within that authorization header. And then the last bit is the actual JSON. So again, I mentioned that this endpoint requires or the body that it requires is the name. Um, that's the one that's required and the others are optional. Um, but I'm actually providing the public one because I want to make this a private playlist. So public is a variable we're going to pass in. Again, we've set it to false here. So this that's going to make it a private endpoint. Oh, sorry, a private playlist. And so that's the JSON, quite simple. And then what you do is uh, this will make out the request. It's going to store it in the response variable. And then to actually get the response in a JSON format, in other words, in a dictionary, um, you call the .json method on that response. And then of course I'm putting the result in here and then I'm returning that back. And then of course that will uh, return uh, back to this um, and it'll be stored in the playlist variable. So hopefully that makes sense. I would have loved to take the time to make a tutorial on doing this uh, step by step. Do let me know if that's something you wanna see in the comments below. And also do let me know if there's any particular uh, things that you wanna do with the Spotify API and make you, maybe you want me to make a tutorial on one of those things. Feel free to let me know in the comments below. But let's give the script a run. Right, so I'm in my uh, directory and here we have the file. So I'm gonna type Python and this was create underscore playlist.py. And if I tap enter, as you notice, it basically printed out the playlist. Now I've made this font bigger. Essentially, he can see the playlist and you can see it's a dictionary and it's got a bunch of values. And the most important thing is uh, the name, as you can tell, we it's not quite clear, but the name's here. And uh, what I'll do is I'll open up Spotify and we'll actually look for this playlist. Right, so as you can tell, I've got a lot of playlists on Spotify, but the most important thing is the most recently created playlist will appear at the top. And here you can see my playlist or my private playlist has been created. And of course it's empty and you can check that it's uh, actually private by clicking the more button. And then here you can see the option to make it public, which obviously means that it's private. So it created the playlist and that looks good. I'm sure you learned a ton, so make sure you smash that like button as well as tap the subscribe and bell icon if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks again for whooping 4,000 subscribers and until next time, have a blast of a day and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.